we're back today and we're going to talk about fixed second law. So we've been kind of hinting that, again, there is some time dependence uh, in addition to our kind of typical for fixed first law, for example, that diffusion is equal to minus d, d, c, d, x, and 1d. So in addition to this concentration gradient, or this grad concentration, there's also going to be some time dependence. So diffusion or our concentration will vary as a function of distance and also time as well. And so this, uh, the way that we can kind of get uh, basically a relationship for concentration as a function of x and time, we are going to have to invoke uh, basically a fixed second law. So fixed second law tells us how well the concentration varies as a function of time um, as a function of n dot, which is the creation of new species. Again, unless we're dealing with a chemical reaction, typically this is going to be zero. So now our equation just becomes simply this. So we know that this is our fixed first law. So dc dt is going to be equal to minus d rad squared c. That's it. That's all kind of uh, that we're dealing with. Now, um, j is going to be the flux in the v-frame. Uh, v now, this equation in this most general form is this. Now, you can kind of see this looks exactly like our expression here, but diffusion our diffusivity, D, can be a function of concentration here. So if that's the case, the equation becomes much more complicated, but typically we can kind of make the assumption, and we will often for this class, that um, D can vary with concentration, but, um, i.e. the D is dependent on concentration, but we're going to assume a lot of times that our diffusivity is independent of concentration. Again, that um, assumption might be different for different scenarios, but that can often be the case, and we're going to utilize that a lot, because that simplifies our life, and we go this, uh, actually go back to this here. We had this minus d, but again, it's the negative gradient, so that's going to be a positive here. So plus d uh, grad squared c. So in 1d, this just basically becomes dc t equals d d squared c dx squared. So this is what type of uh, basic equation? So this is a uh, pd in x and t to an od, you know, uh, uh, pair, you know, exactly, exactly. We're going to be dealing with the PDE here. So hopefully you remember from ODEs and PDE, partial differential equation. So PDE is a function of X and T. So our partial differential equation is a function of T and X. So let's go ahead and see how we're going to utilize this expression, our fixed second law in this course. So let's look at kind of a typical example that we've been looking at previously for our Kirkendall effect. So I want to figure out how is the concentration profile, C of X, how is it going to evolve under certain conditions and boundary uh, conditions? So for each of these problems, we need to identify what are the boundary conditions. So let's look at a diffusion couple, like we've been dealing with uh, first off for Kirkendall. So let's say I want to, I want to write what's the concentration profile of X, T. So in order to kind of uh, solve this problem, again, we don't want to, we don't want to work, uh, uh, we don't want to work with PDEs. Those are kind of difficult and complicated to do because we have this partial differential equation in X and T. We want to uh, work with an ODE, so an ordinary differential equation, basically just as a function of one variable, eta. So we're going to introduce some new dimensionless variable, eta, which is going to be a function of X, T, and then again, D as well. D is just going to be uh, a constant here. So for this example, Let's say, you know, again, we could write out the boundary conditions once we kind of rewrite this variable and introduce this variable eta. So let's rewrite our function, our dc dt equals d basically grad squared c squared. Let's rewrite it and substitute it in this variable x over square root of 4 dt. So we're going to do this substitution uh, and again, change our PDE to an ODE. That's kind of the function of uh, what we're going to be doing here. So to do that, we're going to use our uh, good old friend, our chain rule. So we're going to respect, again, take the time variable or the time derivative with respect to eta instead of concentration, and the same thing for x as well. So you can kind of see and rewrite this. So math is kind of involved here. You could then substitute and plug it back in. And then now we have dc d eta and dc dn. So again, you could kind of use this chain rule and we get our new expression, our fixed second law, essentially, as an ODE instead of a up here, instead of a PDE. And now we can write it and work with this expression. So we see that D squared C, D eta squared, plus 2 uh, eta 
AC. Yeah. So again, all this is doing is just we're rewriting kind of this expression in terms of DNDA that we're using chain rule, but this is our kind of ODE expression. This is our PDE expression. And again, we want to work with this ODE form because that's going to be much easier. It's easier to solve ODEs than PDEs, <laughs> as you'll see. Um, so let's go ahead. Um, for, the, uh, for the rest of those notes, you can kind of see how you would actually solve uh, that particular equation of our diffusion couple by hand. But instead, we are going to kind of utilize uh, Mathematica in order to do this. But if you want to go through the math and you're, if you're an integral expert, um, you're going to see that we're going to get back to kind of our same expression here. But next time, we're going to go ahead and let's solve that in Mathematica. Uh, and we won't have to deal with it in that PD. All right. See you next video. Thanks. Bye.